Stitches watches butt soakers. <laughs> Welcome butt soakers. If you've ever got terrified from this sound, you've come to the right place. Today the focus is butcher. We're going to talk about how to counter the butcher in a few ways in the draft, how to uh, avoid feeding the butcher and the importance of that, which ultimates to take would break down all the different talents, talk about the need to support the butcher if he's on your team. But importantly, we're going to talk about how to stay safe, how to mitigate the butcher when he is drafted against you. If butcher strikes fear into your heart, if you find yourself struggling against butcher in Heroes of the Storm, this is the video for you. So the butcher. Butcher. Ugh. Butcher. Ugh. The horrible, ugly Ugh. beast strikes fear into the heart of all low level players. It makes high-level players laugh. It's a laughable pick. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he's a last pick into the right comp. Yeah, yeah, definitely he has a, a place for sure. But he's considered to be very powerful in low ranks and not so in higher ranks. So why is that? Why does understand how to play against him and often not so much value against people who know better. So the object of the video is to give you a bit more of an understanding of the play style of Butcher and how you can avoid succumbing or being bullied by the Butcher. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> basically he, uh, he starts off relatively weak and he relies on stacking up to become a total late game beast and how he stacks up is by collecting meat isn't it from primarily heroes but also from minions at a, a much lesser rate and once he gets his 200 250 300 stacks of meat it becomes very difficult to deal with indeed he'll kill you quick He'll kill you quick, especially if his team are on the ball and follow up properly, as they should, on his charge to empower him. What you don't want to do is, if you've got a butcher on your team, don't just let him charge in and walk away, because yeah. he will die. And when he, die, he's, when he dies, he loses his meat, loses his stacks, and at the end of the game, you will be flaming butcher, saying, oh, 16k damage butcher. If he didn't get his you stacks... Have... You didn't get his stacks, but you have to, you're have you partly to blame for that because you have to help empower him. He really, it's a really sort of do or die kind of pick into a draft. So you have to understand that, first and foremost. But he seems so, to m murder people in low ranks. He does, he can I've been murdered by the butcher rampage. many times. <laughs> he basically, he's a hero that punishes silly mistakes. So what are the mistakes you're going to make when playing against the butcher that you want to avoid? Like you've probably heard it said in the chat many times, don't feed the butcher. And uh, basically that means dying unnecessarily. Giving him blood or meat. Giving him the blood, which empowers him to get stronger. That's right, the meat. So yeah, it looks, it's weird that because it, it's actually meat that he gets, but, but the icon blood. that you pick up yeah. is blood, isn't it? Yeah, rather than pieces of meat. It's blood. It's blood, blood. Blood, blood. Yes. So, so build. Butcher, what's so good about him? Let's just talk quickly about some of his assets. Basically, he's the, he's the only hero in the game that's got a guaranteed point and click stun. What is charge? His charge, yeah. So you don't. It's not a skill shot at all. You can't dodge it. You can't avoid it. He becomes invulnerable to any any CC whilst he's charging. So once he's clicked on you. And you get that fearful run towards your towers, quick shot. Exactly, yeah. But you need to be in a in a position where you can re that you've got an option to retreat. Otherwise, it's too late, isn't it? Or at least you've got your tank around you. Yeah. And tanks, you and and here it is. We've other CC. If you've got CC, you want to be drafting CC against the butcher. You, you know, hold. When you off hear that, that charge. CC. Yeah, get ready before it, but hold off until he's actually stunned his target. Because he is invulnerable, and see some low-level players who will try to stun. You know, they've got the right idea, but they'll stun him a bit early, and um, yeah, won't, won't, no won't work. 
if you're being charged you the important thing to do is even if you are a tank is to back away from the butcher because he puts his branded skill on you uh, now butcher's brand oh yeah and he heals oh. for his auto attacks right yes 75 percent of the damage he does he gets healed for. which is a and lot <laughs> a lot when he's especially when he starts to stack up it gets yeah. quite significant so it becomes very hard to kill if you just stand in toe to toe with him and you've got the brand on you even you know, your team struggles to kill him so you need to if you've got the brand you need to back away so that he can't heal from you and then he becomes much more vulnerable. And also, that's the way to counter, isn't it? Is as soon as you hear the charge, everybody just turn their attention to him. Yeah. Because then it makes him frightened to charge in, rather than you being frightened of him charging. Yeah, good early punish punishment. Yeah. Let to let him know you're all on the ball, is good. But I mean, you'll often find that he'll charge a weaker member of the team, like a, a DPS player or a healer. He'll be looking to to so he can get a quick kill. He'll be looking to target those. But that means he has to normally, if, if your positioning is good, yeah, he has to run into the back line. He mm. has to overextend exactly. So, so you want him to do that. You, you can even you know bait him to do that. And um, I love a bait. I'll bait him. You hate him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you've got an escape, like a, just say your valor, and you've got a vault to escape, when you hear the charge, you just have to stomach it, get stunned, and then vault away after you've been stunned. So then he can't heal off you. He can't because quite often you'll bolt away and still get stunned, and then you've got nothing left, and that's when you'll be hamstrung, slowed. Yeah, he'll heal and he'll die. So ultimately, it, it's really counterintuitive because you just want to do oh escape spell, escape spell, and that's fine if you're right under the tower, you can escape to the safety of your towers. Yeah, but uh, if you're not, you need to wait until you're stunned, and then bolt away. Unless, of course, it's after level 10 and he puts Lamb of the Slaughter on you. Lamb of the Slaughter. Ugh. Dead. Yeah. And then you can't. But, uh... but you were saying about yeah. that. That's the same as Nazebo's zombie war, isn't it? Instead of panicking, trying to run out of it and just going... Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. It's, a, it's his most... Attack him, right? It seems to be his most popular role in low levels, Lamb of the Slaughter. Yeah, and it... Uh, tethers you to a point... Science three seconds your... and your science yeah your science for the, for the duration horrible well it's been damaged feels like forever <laughs> yeah but the strategy is very counterintuitive again you just want to run away and you'll see it time and time again where people run and they get pulled back they run they get pulled back yeah i still run, do, it. do it all back. the time yeah because you just get the fear you get the butcher fear the only thing you can do is you can't get away for three seconds so what you need to do and you can't cast a spell either yeah so you stand still and you auto attack because at least you're adding value to the team fight. If you're an, a, 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 say a Valor is the example I'm using, you could do 300 damage per auto attack. You, in three seconds, you get three attacks off. That's 900 damage. Mm. So you can really add value to your team by just standing still and also attacking. And as soon as it drops, then you back away. If you can, yeah. If you can, if you're not dead by then. But if you are dead, hopefully Otherwise you're, you're just be killing him as well. Just doing nothing for three seconds. Yeah, but by running... Doing and getting pulled back and running and getting pulled back, you're you're doing nothing and you're just uh, you're just basically feeding, feeding the butcher. Useless, yeah, exactly. Feed the beast. Don't feed the beast. Yeah, but, but so you can mitigate that. You know, it feels like oh, lambda sort of OP. Yeah. Nothing. I can do nothing. You can do something. What you can do is you can stand still and auto attack and try and get 900 damage into that butcher or anyone else. And then maybe he won't make it out. At least it's one exactly. for one. Even mm. if you die, you can t help to kill him as well. But he might die. If you put 900 damage into him, he might die very quickly if your team are on the ball as well, and he'll get stunned and all sorts. And uh, and you might well, you know, you, I've lived loads of times from there of a slaughter, to be honest. Yeah. If your team's on the ball. So it's the best really way to it, counter him, really, though, is in the draft, right? I mean, that's the first point of counter, isn't it? Yeah, if they pick an early butcher, mm. what can you do? You've got, you've got time and assets available to be able to count, counter him, haven't you? So the main point of counter is blind because he's when he charges, an auto attack. Yeah. Yeah, he's an auto attack hero, so he gets he does lots of auto attack when he's when he's getting stacked. But also he that's where he heals from as well. He gets lots of healing from his auto attack. So if he's blind, that means his auto attacks do no damage, he doesn't get the heal and he obviously does less damage. So as Adam just said as he's as he's a uh, charging when he when he gets to you when that invulnerability goes 
you need to hold your blind for that moment so you can drop it on him and he negates his healing reduces his damage that's a really good counter to the butcher mm. and 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 like people like Lily and stuff really low cooldown on that on that so you can bang it out but any any cc in general polymorph's very good any cc yeah, any room down yeah because that's yeah right polymorph's a good one for him <laughs> anything yes. that does that so how, how can you personally counter him? Like if you've got an ice block or something like that, I guess you can use that. But... Yeah, ice blocks is uh, really good. Stuff like that. Yeah, you can bait it. I mean, now everyone's got self cleanse. We spoke about that before in the Alex video. Oh yeah. You know, every every three hundred seconds you've got self cleanse, so that will cancel the butcher's charge on you if you if you push it at the right moment. Don't 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 push it too quickly, but just as he gets to you, you push self cleanse and he. Stop short and yeah, and he's deep in the middle of your team. And you get to wander off without being hindered. So that makes should make things a lot harder for him actually, since that's came in. And if if your cooldown isn't up, then position correctly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, polymorph's big, but Brightwing's a big counter to him because of not just the polymorph, but also he's got the uh, Emerald Wind, which is another oh, right, the spell thing. Or pushing yeah. away. Like uh, not that's clear his ultimate ability. He does the winds everyone away from Brightwing, so you can teleport onto the targeted creep, uh, the the onto the butcher opponent, target. the butcher yeah. targets, yeah, and then use your animal wind and that pushes the butcher away and that negates his charge and all of his stuff. Yes. What about Gust? Will that push him off? Gust is awesome for that. Yeah, absolutely. All that sort of things. Yeah. Yeah, Gust is good to combat Lamb and Slaughter. Lamb to the slaughter, but maybe not his charge because, of course, Gus's cooldown would be yeah, way too long. Yeah, yeah, seventy seconds or whatever. As his charge would be every fifteen seconds. So, but yeah, in a desperate situation, of course, yeah, definitely you'd do it. Um, yeah. So, but generally, so you don't want to charge. You, a good butcher player will be going from lane to lane. He'll be looking for ganks, looking for overextended heroes. Don't be the overextended hero. You need to. Keep very focused on the mini map. If you can't see the butcher anywhere on the mini map, you need to play safe. Assume that he's in a bush near you, and that, because that's that's his main game plan is going to be trying to hunt overextended jungle. So don't get yeah, jungle exactly. Yeah. So don't be that hero. Don't mm. be that guy. Um, don't be an hero. Be an hero. Yeah. Also, mini map awareness. If he's if you don't see the butcher on the mini map for any length of time. Especially after level 10, you can assume that he's doing a boss if there is one. So always check the bush. It's a good idea to have some kind of vision or just have eyes on the on the boss. Not the bush, sorry, the boss. Because he can solo the boss and, and low-level low players love to solo the boss with the butcher. And of course, if you catch him at him, it's a free kill because he'd be on half health and yeah. uh, your team will storm in and destroy him and pinch the boss. So be aware of that and make sure you check it. Well, it's a big, big thing. I've never soloed the boss. Have you never soloed the boss? I've soloed the boss so. of Valor. Really? Yeah, like later level when you get self heal. <laughs> you get, get up to 10 stacks first and then you can uh, solo the boss, but it's not, not advisable because again, <laughs> I mean, uh, Varian's another one, isn't he? Same. Yeah, yeah I know he can do it, yeah. You just, if well, he's not Illidin, on the mini map. I think Illidan can Illidin. do it, can't he? Exactly, yeah. It's the same, same idea. You need to be aware if you haven't seen him on the mini map. I mean, you should be checking the mini map every sort of ten seconds, every five seconds, just yeah. to keep aware of where everyone is. If they're not on the mini map and you haven't seen him for ten seconds or more, go check the boss because they're probably trying to solo it stupidly, and you get they'll get away with it in bronze, you know. But uh, they'll be punished for it over and over in a high level, yeah. and that's what we're aiming to be high level players. That's the goal, isn't it? That's the goal, yeah. So. Uh, I think that covers most of the butcher scene Angrin. Should Good summary. The other thing is less uh just less skirmishing, less fighting in general. Don't give him the chance to keep stacking up. Kill him when possible. If you see him alone in the lane, rotate with your tank yeah, to go and kill him. Yeah. Because when he dies he loses his meat. So you do want he to don't kill lose him all of it all of it though, does he? Just no. some of it. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't lose all of it. I believe he loses But it certainly slows him down. 
Yeah. Butcher loses 15 meat upon dying. He gets 20 every time he, he, he kills a hero. So you don't want to trade kills with him either. Yeah. He will still... I mean, he's slow, much slower stack, but he will be in a plus situation. Um, yeah, he does have to pick up the meat as well. So if anyone dies near him, he can walk and pick up the meat. So you can, like the gems in Spider Queen, you can yeah. guard them so that don't make it easy for him to pick them up. It doesn't show you, though, does it? It only shows him, right? Yeah, but you... That's right, but you know... So you just have to know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But especially Knowledge. if he starts walking off where the dead person died previously, then you can... Uh, Punish him for, for trying to go deeper than he should pick that up. Because the, the draw, it's like a moth to the flame, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we've all mean, done it. I need to get that. Yeah, up. must yeah. get. It's like me and the flower, Alex's flower. <laughs> must that get is. the flower. Dying for globes since 1997, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Butcher, fearful. But be smart, be safe, and uh, he can be counted, to be honest. As frustrating as he might seem. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah so, uh, talent-wise, you've got an idea for a talent build of your own. You saying? Well, I can tell you what I do, but what do you do? <laughs> I'm not sure it's uh, standard or anything. Level is your butcher. Uh, don't know, fifteen, I think. Yeah, fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. I personally feel that a lot of his talents are interchangeable. Depending yeah. on what the other team have got, what you've got, you can uh, you can alter them. Well, it's usually like thirteen is an alt, uh, usually an interchangeable one, isn't it? On a lot of heroes. Yeah, and sixteen is often a big power spike as well. Yeah. When you get the big powerful ones, they're all often all good, but not always, but often. Well, first I take invigoration because hamstring. I mean, it's how you play, right? So I'll use a lot of hamstring because I don't want to overextend and it's also helpful to clear waves. And so that can just really help. Mm. Um, but also hamstring in, the, in later talents will proc other bonuses. And so when you charge in, you will save it and charge in. And then when you get there, immediately hamstring them and then you get all the sort of basic attack bonuses and stuff and so you mm -hmm. can chop somebody down that's the way I play it anyway it's like an so all in sort of strategy isn't it you just you're either in or you're out with the butcher you can't sort of just get involved yeah. in the fight and he's very much all in the, that invigoration in. half the mana cost is refunded I don't think he has much mana problems butcher generally uh, the cooldown is reduced by a second yeah so I guess it's a four second cooldown, so it's very low, so yeah, but actually means you get a hell of a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is what I mean. And that also will continue to proc you further down the line, the other talents, right? Mm. But basically like Butcher's not about getting early kills, is he? He's about just destroying everybody in the late game and walking a core. Like, because the yeah. early kills are what are gonna put you at risk. Because until you stack all your meat, you're really not as powerful as you need to be. A bit like Diablo, right? Until he's got his souls, he's not that scary. That's right, yeah. But he needs the kills to get the meat. Yeah, but you can just get them from minions. So you, and also, you don't have to get the kill. When a, when a hero dies, they'll drop the blood anyway. Yeah, that's true. You just have to collect it, right? So yeah. you can sort of be smart about that as well. Yeah. But anyway, depending on who they've got. I mean, if they've got, like, Valor, Li Ming... Or like, I don't know, like people like that, then I'd probably take block. Uh, because they can just get just pepper you down really easily, I find. Yeah. yeah you mean Zoljin, yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah any, any high high auto attack heroes that normally block's always a viable talent if you've got auto attack heroes on the other side that aren't particularly fast at auto attacking. It's the ones that attack really fast that make it a bit useless like tracer for example yeah mm -hmm. and uh, the blocks wasted very quickly but slower ones like zoljin who chunk 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 yeah as well. well valor as well like if she's got 10 hatred and she's just poking you it's yeah 
which will soon whittle yeah, you definitely. down, right? And that really mitigates that. But Rain, no, all those also, when you charge in, right? That'll also if, if they all if they're on the ball a little bit and all start attacking you, that'll really help that as well. Yeah. But I tend to take hamstring to be honest, invigoration. And then I take the hamstring one again, flailax. That increases the length of hamstring. Yeah. Because again, I want to get them to get my bonuses, so I want to make sure that I get them. Uh, and also, that really helps if you if if it's early game still with level four, and it really helps to clear the wave because you can get like the whole wave in it then yeah so that's, that's true for me that's that works for me then yeah. i take meat shield on seven so uh, when he charges in and you actually go for it you get 50 spell armor um but obviously if i don't have any mages or something then then i'll take vittles yeah but uh usually meat on the map as well some maps are very like lane heavy fighting in lanes. Yeah. And so you get a lot of value from victuals. Whereas some maps you don't fight in lanes so much, so you'll get less value from it. So bear that in mind if you did want to pick that talent. Yeah, so but I take meat shield so that when I run in and go for it, there's a little bit of protection yeah. to try and get out, right? Because you don't want to lose your blood. Yeah, you want that all in survivability kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And then obviously 10 I take down to the slaughter because it's just horrible because like, yeah. I've been lambed so many times <laughs> that's why I take it because I know what it's like to be lambed it's not very nice yeah but uh, I think furnace blast is what you're supposed to take I'm sure I've heard well, you say that before. I think lamb is more popular to be honest but yeah but popular as I said to you by the by, isn't it? it depends on your team if your team has lots of CC and, and lots of chain stun capability lots of lockdown then furnace blast is very good for a uh, for just extra damage, but if you haven't got significant amounts of X, of uh, CC, then Lamb is a is a great one kill, first kill. Yeah, just make sure. Or actually, also a lot of the time you'll do it, you'll engage with it, and then by the time the fight's finished and you've got the objective and they're running away, you've got it again to grab one of them when they're running away. Yeah, like stop them running. I mean. Uh, a lot of the time I end up using it to save myself, to be honest. And I know I shouldn't, but... Yeah, I think it's definitely an early an early ult. Yeah. On the char charge lamb. And then, and then you try and secure that kill, which gives you the blood and helps you to uh, mid-game sort of start to... Really yeah, start and then get out rather than just stick around in there, like... It depends on how it's going, yeah. Because you're not a bruiser, you're an assassin. Yeah. Anyway, then 13, 13. I take Savage Charge. Uh, yeah. But again, they're interchangeable on 13, right? But Savage Charge is the one I generally take. But sometimes yeah, so I take Hamstring uh, because I feel like you get just as much. Like if you, if you, Hamstring, the Brutal Strike Hamstring one is good for uh, any hero, whereas the Maximum Health one is obviously good for like more healthful heroes. But yeah. so it depends who they've got, right? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, ultimately, the lesson start. you end up learning is that you should be built. There's obviously a meta talent bill, but you should be changing it slightly depending on the draft, right? Yeah, and the play style. Like, let's say they've got a, uh, some sort of tank, like a Diablo, who comes in really deep all the time, and you're and you're finding that you can probably kill him, and you can just charge onto the charge onto him, can't you, and kill him, for example. Yeah, with that talent. Yeah. If they've got a tank that's a bit overzealous. But like the ten percent, you're normally going to be charging low health hero heroes, so the ten percent's not going to be massively significant. Yeah, but it's of their maximum health, not of their health pool that they've got. Yeah, and their maximum health is less than a tank, for example. So you. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, but it's still a lot. <laughs> is all I'm saying. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, but actually, the hamstring one is good. Because what I do is charge in and then immediately hamstring to get all the extra bonuses, right? And so that brutal strike still works perfectly yeah. well. So this is a this is this empowers basic attacks. As I said, if they've got a blind on their team and they're using it at yeah, the right then time, don't pick that. That negates the power of that. Yeah. Basically, because you're getting the next five seconds, you deal fifteen percent of your basic attacks. The blind will last three seconds probably. So 
It, yeah. You know, you want to don't really take that into blinds if they're using them properly. So again, those two really, when you start getting more, you learn more heroes, then you sort of know what those heroes do, and you start building yeah. around yeah. the heroes, right? Rather than just doing your build that you think's best, you sort of like. Yeah, Versatility. that's one of those ones that you need to change up, depending on the drafts, right? Yeah, and not that's not your draft, their draft, right? Yeah, sixteen. Sixteen. I take blood frenzy. Because yeah, again, that's when you charge in. Every time you attack someone, you increase your attack and movement speed. So like you just. Yeah. And increased attack speed also obviously gives you more self more healing. healing. Yeah, exactly. All right. Which you also get from enraged. When you're low, when you need it most, actually, when you're low. But you might have already wasted brand when you was high. So. Yeah, and um, so on on sixteen you go blood frenzy and twenty. You're saying Nexus Blades, were you? Yeah, just because it's just mental damage. Yeah. But again, it depends, right? Like if my if I if if I when I've been lamb lamb to the slaughtering people, if all my team follows it up, like every time I do it, like they're looking for it. Like they should. Yeah. Then I'll take slaughterhouse because I know that if I get three or four of them in there, they're all going to perish. Yeah. Right? And in the lower levels, again, people seem to clump up a lot more. Yeah, so you get much so you're more, more likely to hit it. Like we had a four man lamb yesterday, didn't it, or the other day? Yeah, but yeah, that's right. It was an epic one, wasn't it? But uh, actually, in my experience, like obviously your experience is different, right? Because you'll play with people that actually like are on the ball, and if you lamb four people, they all turn around and throw everything they've got at it, right? But yeah. whereas I'll do it, and like everyone will run off, like they'll see that as their opportunity to escape or something, right? <laughs> It's a bit like wonky, and so I'll do it, and I'll be like, "Yes, I've lambed four of them, being all proud mm. of myself," and everyone's sort of walking off. And then I'm, what happens yeah. if they all come out a lamb, and I'm stood there on my own and just get killed, yeah. right? But as I said, lamb, lamb is really a early, yeah, yeah. early fight. Ultimately, you got to use it early, really. I think to get the most from it. So really, it just depends how the game's going, if, uh, whether I do that. But if not, if I feel like I'm a bit on my own. And like they're not following up my lambs, then I'll take Nexus Blades so that when I lamb someone, I'm pretty much definitely going to kill them no matter who they are. Yeah. Good point. You know, like I can lamb someone with like who's got a massive health pool, Stitches. I can lamb Stitches with Nexus Blades and that 10% talent. He's dead, mate. <laughs> like run in, stun him, hamstring, hit him a few auto attacks. As he starts to walk away, lamb him, hamstring him again, give him like, and he's just dead. And I've got full health. Health. The lamb as well, yeah. And so okay, like, so that, that's that's how I sort of roll. Regarding some of the talents, I feel that level one chop me seems to be third. It's again that's probably to help kill the boss, do camps. Get yeah, if you want to solo the boss, you got to take that, and yeah. Yeah, that's but right. But actually, that's probably helpful if if they're really if the uh, the thing is it's your first talent, and so. I would take that one if it was on a level four because by then I would know if the enemy team are a bit like unkillable. Like if the enemy I mean, team are playing well and hiding from you and not letting you get any meat, then you can sort of defer to doing lanes and getting your meat that way. Yeah, you should you should do a bit of laning as butcher for sure. And so that obviously really helps with the lane, right? Yeah, outside of fights, you want to be in lane killing minions to get meat, keep the meat count rising all the time even if sort of small increments with the minions yeah because he's all about being stacked right yeah incrementally stacking so it's definitely worth looking at chop mate block is obviously if they've got big auto attackers like soldier and valor and oh, yeah. and so but uh, we, we, pl uh, keep in mind it's only two charges of, of block so we, if when you when you do charge into a big auto, uh, a big altercation a big fight it's sort of limited value, but when it's one on one, it's much more valuable. And when you're escaping, it can just just give that extra couple to, <laughs> couple of steps. You're running away, and Nova pops out. <coughs> yeah, a couple of times. it just it does help to to keep you up. But when when it actually kicks off, you normally that's not going to do too much. Not going to do anything like the spell armor will. That'll be mm. much more doing that. And uh, four, I was going to say. I've seen a lot of people taking unrelenting pursuit. I'm not really sure of the massive value of that. I think increased hamstring is definitely better. You can just 
it's it's better for keeping stopping people getting away from you. It's better for clearing minion waves. I, I just think that's the yeah, because hamstring slows them right, and so yeah, they yeah. I had Lanara the other day when I was a butcher, and she was doing her ultimate leap, jumping over the top of me. Yeah. And I was hamstringing her with flail as she landed on the other side of me. Uh, the, the small one wouldn't have reached her, but it, it was enough to get her and yeah. I could approach her. So I, I think flail's quite good as well. Here, Insatiable Blade on seven is also, you know, it does really keep you right on the tail of someone. It stops them from getting away. Yeah, well, but, if you're slowing them as well, they'll never get away from you, will they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now the on... cleanse, that's less. Yeah, but you still you can still keep up with them unless they've got a slow. But I mean, again, that is their team isn't really focusing you so hard. That's a good one. We can get solo kills lots. Yeah. Said about victuals if it's a lane a map where you're fighting in lane a lot. It's pronounced vitals, isn't it? Crack held out, victuals. Yeah. Vitals. Crack held out, for example. Braxis. Yeah, we're fighting in lane Ugh. a lot of the time around the point. There's lots of minions around. When they die, it keeps you healed up. Like outside of fighting, you can keep your sustain really high. Mm. But yeah, meat shield is good, especially if you've got uh, some sort of mage. Uh, meat shield. I normally go furnace blast because so the damage it does is just pretty awesome. But you, you have know, to be in and amongst with... everyone then, though. That's right. Well, that's when you charge. Basically, you you push it and then push charge. Yeah. Because it's a three-second delay, so then when you get to them, it it goes off. If you if you're pushing it late, then you get you'll find if you find you're not getting much value out of it, you're pushing it too late. I would say, preempt it if you're going for this blast. Mm. Yeah, right. Prime blast yourself and, and charge in. <laughs> and then you a second later, boom. So, but yeah, but it's really good against. So, you, like I said, your team needs good CC. So if you've got something like my head, you can put a cage around everybody, or. Uh, or a pit, something like that, right? <laughs> and you can charge into it and just and she kills everyone. It's a such so very large amount of damage, especially at twenty when it goes off. Yeah. Another three seconds. So, but Lamb is the go-to one to just secure the kill, get the meat, get out, and uh, get that incremental power spike, keep that going, and uh, and that's the way to play it. But anything else I've noticed said about that? I've never really seen Cleaver being used. Oh, enraged. Kind of an interesting option at 16, was when you're below 50% health, you get 40% attack speed and armor, 25 armor, reducing the damage take. 40% attack speed is just really fast, and yeah. if you've got a brand on somebody that you can actually hit, so much better healing that you get from that. Uh, yes, and it's when but you need it most. You shouldn't you're really armor. ever be below 50% health. And also, oh. when you're doing them attacks, you're healing yourself. And so, therefore, you're sort of doing yourself out of the talent as you attack them, right? Yeah. So, yeah, Which if you're winning weird. hard, you probably don't need to take that. That's right. This is like a win more. This is like... Basically, it procs when you need it most, is the point. You're getting yeah. low and you need your self heal. That procs up, making you, giving you armor and give you more attack speed. It's worth looking at. I, I, either of those work. You're right. I mean, perhaps that could stop you dying. Yeah, exactly. If you if you put, if you you put wait until you put your brand... If you pick that talent, you wait until you're at 50% health and you put your brand on somebody. Oh, no, wait a minute, yeah. It says he becomes enraged for 10 seconds, so it doesn't matter. If you then go above 50% health, it doesn't stop. No, you keep the enrage, yeah. Yeah, right. So you just need to hold back on the brand slightly if you do take that, right? So then you lose some health, you put the brand on someone, and you just... Mm, Awesome amounts of healing. Yeah, and then that. Then that. Yeah, nice. I mean, bolt's also an option at uh, 20. You know, if you are struggling and you need to get out, you're finding that they're doing really lots of good focus damage on you. You get in and out, you can charge in and bolt out. Do you go far with that? Not that far, but far enough to get away. I mean, what's far? Sort of. Yeah. Far. <laughs> About a nose length. Yeah. So. So basically, you E. And then Q. No, W, Q. No, Q, W. And then auto attack. And then try and get another Q off before you have to get out. That's right. The butcher. Don't be scared. If you see the butcher, if, you, if you're in ranked, try and think about 
picking CC into the butcher, so like soft CC, be it a blind or silence or hard CC, like a, a root right. or a, uh, a stun, ideally, and hold it off for when. And then just you... even if he doesn't charge you, right? If you like, if you hear that charge go down, just turn and throw yeah. a few auto attacks at him, and you'd be surprised the difference. Like, if everybody just auto attacks him twice every time he charges in, he's not going to do it, like, without thinking hard about it. Yeah. Or without just dying. And so, like, really, that's a weird way to... I think a lot of the Butcher, it's a bit like ETC with his mosh. Like, you can get as much value out of not using it as you can out of using it. Yeah. Because they know you've got it, and they're fearing they're waiting for it, right? And so, because they're waiting for that, they're holding off using their stuff. And I think Butcher has the same sort of um, psychology, right? Where you, he he works on fear, right? The fear of like, yeah. and the noise goes, and, dum, 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 dum. and so you're like frightened of him because every time he gets you, he kills you. Yeah. Whereas to counter mm -hmm. that, the really the best way is if as soon as everyone hears that noise, they just immediately start attacking him. Then he becomes frightened to push the button because he knows what's going to happen <laughs> everyone's going to just lay into him right yeah man you should because often when he pushes that button and, and charges in he puts himself out of position yeah that's right and that's what you should always be looking for as soon as someone steps out of position you want to be cc'ing them and everybody focusing that target so yeah. that's and so remember that's... you can cancel your charge as well yeah and then you because you can use that psychologically also right Mm. Like if you needed someone to step back a bit, just put the brown on them and he'll go dub, 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 and then cancel it. But they'll already be sort of taking a few steps back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can say you can say that's the teammates say it's really low, it's yeah. retreating and being chased by a squishy to get the last few shots on him. You can yeah, frighten you can them off. You turn them with such a move. You don't want to use it like that all the time, right? But it's definitely worth it a lot of the time. Yeah. So listen, if you're playing against the butcher, play safe, especially early. Uh, yeah, fight for the objective, of course, but in the lane, in phase, don't overextend unnecessarily or alone because you're just going to help to empower him. Rotate to kill him when you can. Use your towers for safety. Um, if you're playing as the butcher, make sure you are rotating for kills. Keep your eye on the mini map. Hiding in the bushes. Yeah, in them bushes, yeah. But also, you need to be in lane as well. When, it, when there's nothing going on and no opportunities of rise, you want to be in lane just eating minions, getting the meat, keep stacking up. But we've, I mean, as much as we've all lost against butchers where they're just charging and eating everybody, we've also had butchers on our team that just charge right into five men all the time. So be wary of that. Don't just charge into a team of five. Yeah, you want to pick off targets, right? Yeah. Mm. You want to, like I said, gank people, so you're 2v1, or you want to um, look for people that get a bit low, like I said, if a tank like, overextends and they stay longer than they should and they start getting low, it's a great target to just charge into and yeah. get some free meat or, or if anyone else overextends, goes out of position. Yeah, and make sure if you've got a butcher on your team, you assist him. You need your win revolves around him stacking. So make sure you help him get his kills. And uh, help him live as well. <laughs> yeah, know that he needs to stack and facilitate mm. it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, cool. Anything else to add? Uh, no. I think I'm going to play Butcher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, make sure you play him. It's definitely a really fun uh, character to play. Yeah. I think a lot of people like it because they've been totally murdered by him before, right? Mm -hmm. And it makes you think, oh, yeah, I've got to play him. Yeah, Butcher OP. Yeah, but he's not at all. <laughs> but when you're stacked, he really is. Yeah, if he's if you're a patient player, then oh yeah, once then... you're stacked as well, you don't lose them after that, do you? Well, uh, once you get to two hundred, you don't lose any after that. Yeah, and once you get to that, that's right, and then you then you can be a lot more aggressive. Than Just, you, yeah. Than yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Yeah. Make sure if you've got any other ideas, if you disagree with some of the bills we were talking about, crack it in the comments. We'd love to. We also, you know, it's, it's a process, learning process. We'd like to. Hear what you got to say on the matter? Definitely. I just thought of one thing. Go on. Uh, as a healer, it's quite interesting that talent that when he goes below a certain health, it procs it, right? Mm -hmm. Enraged. Because now that's even brought value for me as a healer. And it's why you should be checking the talents that people take quickly. Yeah. Because 
if I I would never before this conversation I would never have known that that's a thing, mm. right? Because it's not on my radar. I don't take it very often. You're keeping him above fifty percent, and he's hoping to drop below it. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm like, he goes in and he starts losing health, and I'm like frantically healing, like life bindering him and all sorts, right, mm. to try and keep him above. And he's trying to get below fifty to then get that talent to then just get all his yeah. health back with his brand. I mean, right? don't overthink it. I don't think he's trying to get below fifty, but no, no. Yeah, well, I don't right. know. I think that was a really good point that you made. Like, you actually, you just go in and then wait for that to proc and then brand them and then you just get all your health back really quickly, don't you? 40% of attack speed is like, you just mash your health straight back up, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, it's all in an ideal world, isn't it? Like, if if they know that as well, they wait until you're 50% and then stun you. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden you drop And really that quick. might happen anyway. Yeah, I don't suppose you would actually... This is why it's not such a great talent, I don't think. You should you should never aim to be on lower than 50% health, right? No, but as the butcher, <clears> you are going to be the target of a lot of damage and you are your health is going to fluctuate. You can get a lot yeah. of healing, good, and you should get a lot of damage taken as well. As well right, as well. so again, that's why that's more a pro would take that because he's going to get all those things that you just mentioned, can, whereas like yeah, you if you're... Line, but yeah, if you're playing on your own, you're not in a real team, you're just like playing solo queue. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably not going to work out for you, right? No, potentially. We never know who's on your team, but yeah, that's right. That's true. Yeah, so it anyway, might be all... the best talent, but it might not be the best one to pick, especially if you're solo queuing, right? Got confused. And especially if you've got a healer like me, <laughs> just healing the life out of you. I remember Plastic doing thing. it to uh, playing with Gav, and he was all gin. Mm, and I yes. was like, he was getting really low in health, but purposely getting low in health because he does more damage or something. I don't know. I've never yeah. played him. Yeah. But I'm just like frantically healing him. He's like, stop healing me. <laughs> <laughs> like at the crucial moments, he's like, right now, I'm just going to quickly kill that guy and then get my health back. Yeah. yeah he's he's got put himself out of position. Sank, I've life blinded him. Yeah. <laughs> and suddenly he's just got no power, right? Yeah. And so that's why it's really important to play all the heroes, you know, and just. You build that knowledge, like, and really, that's ultimately what really, really good players have over lower rank players, right? It's not necessarily mechanical skill, although that is obviously a factor. But like, you know, you don't need mechanical skill to to charge with the butcher to charge with the butcher. You just click on him, click E on him, and he does it all himself, right? And so. For example, and so Again, it's really about what you know and who, you, what you, what you know, and you you know who you should attack and who you shouldn't, and when you can attack and when you can't, and not if they take. And then it goes all through these levels of complexity, doesn't it? Like if they've taken that talent, then don't charge them here, or you know, etc., etc., etc. So the more yeah. heroes well, you learn, what experience that adds up to yeah. knowing those. Things. But rather than just like one trick, and I think one trick is sort of good to get you good at the game and get, make you realise how much better one build can be to another build, right? As you get more experience, you're like, wow, it's just like, incredible how different, picking the different talents really makes a huge difference. But, uh, yeah. you know, then you, you've got to play them all, man, because you've got to, they all synergize in such different ways, don't they? And if you yeah. sort of just don't really know much about a hero, you're already on a on the back foot because you're going to be doing things that counteract what they're For doing, sure. right? Like when ETC you game, boinging in everyone out of my, you know, I'll be trying. Yes. <laughs> Everyone's trying to especially, get in the circle, and then someone will knock them all out or whatever. Especially on one on one, I find when you don't know what the hero is capable of that you're up against, mm. it can be very uh, surprising. Uh, but if you, yeah, it's good to play them all. So you've got a basic understanding at least. But you find you normally gravitate towards one type of play style, like either you, yeah, you're good for at sure, yeah. attacking or, or mage player or uh, a tank. Yeah. And then you just walk towards that, don't you? But it's definitely good to have the knowledge of. But you know, it's better to play someone that you're good at if you're playing ranked and you're trying to rank up. For sure, yeah. Than yeah. To, to bend over backwards to try and counter or fill some kind of role that you're not comfortable in. You're better off playing someone that you're good at. Generally. Yeah, especially when you're learning. But mm -hmm. I think that someone that's got like ten level fifty characters. Well, even though they'll be really good at those 10 characters, they still won't be as good a player as someone that's got level 5 on every single character. Well, 
Perhaps. Because their knowledge was sh like so much more useful. Because Butch will always do a lot of damage, but you know you just have to pick talents, and he'll do a lot of damage. But you'll also die a lot if you don't know who you're going up against, right? You know. Mm. In my experience, anyway. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There's this. Yeah. But the levels of complexity really sort of interest me. You know. It's it starts off with your game and your hero and you like and then it goes out into like that's the least of your worries is like you know most of what the game is is knowing what everybody else is doing and what talents they've picked and how that affects everything else and you know like you said about the spell damage that didn't really occur to me too much so I always take that talent uh, meat shield on level 7 hmm I always take that, but then I've probably taken that so many times, thinking that I get fifty armor, but I don't. I get fifty spell armor. Yeah, right. right. And so I'm like thinking, all oh, right, it's all right. I'll just charge them; they're not going to kill me. And then they've killed me. I'm like, what's? Why did that even happen? <laughs> you know. And he's got a rainer. He's just going pum pum pum. Yeah, yeah. He's not even doing spell damage, and so it doesn't help me at all. Yeah. Right? And so obviously I know now, but I I bet I've picked that talent a hundred times. When there wasn't even anybody doing spell damage on me, right? <laughs> and so, but obviously, like yeah. you know, can, can you list <laughs> all the heroes that do spell damage? You know, I mean, they all do spell damage to a degree. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, one ones that you're actually going to have to mitigate. Like it's when you cast, like hamstring is spell damage, for example. Yeah, but the bulk of the butcher's damage comes from his auto attacks. His auto attacks, right? And so if I were picking a talent into the butcher, like the butcher's attacking me, then I don't want the spell armor no, talent. Do although, I, right? Generally not. Although saying that, if he's got furnace blast, then it could help you. The ultimate. The God, that's what I mean. How intricate it gets, mm -hmm. and it really impresses me how many sums the computer's doing at every millisecond. You know. Outrageous! Great game, and it's free. So it's free. <laughs> Get into it. Crazy. Get right into it. Yeah, nice one, Miles. Thanks for the tips, man. Yeah, cool. Good luck, guys. Let's know how you get on. Please leave comments, share and subscribe. And if you thought that it was worth it, then give it a like. Mark.